ok, ok. I am in Mad from Algeria. Exactly. Exactly in Coro City. I was as a trade this marks four years for four for uh, for four years and the last three years I have been Asian blender only for all my part. I I like to share you my artwork in art station in art station. I make all his artwork blender only. For example, this scene and other scenes he inspired by Rome. I like to show, show, show you some technique how modeling his architecture. Let's go open a blender. I going all the red cube and and click hand and add background. For his example, I just and background for Washington White House. For example, this thing. Select file one. Okay. Add scale twenty. Add plane. Uh, in this video, um. I'm going to show you how to model a dome, uh, the dome of the White House. I'll show you the, the easy way to, to model. Uh, I'll start by adding play, <coughs> then <coughs> adding two, two modifiers, the array modifiers, then uh, the simple deform modifiers. This technique is a, a great way to, <coughs> to model something that is uh, repeating to to save time and uh, and memory so now you're watching the 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 method I'm, uh, I'll always do in in all my projects especially for for modeling domes so it's all about easy things that uh, that can make great modelings. If you want the term to be bigger, you, you can simply uh, increase the count of the array modifier. So it's it's basically a model in one part and uh, and, and multiplying it by the, the number of uh, of the dome, the number as you want. Uh, uh, <clears throat> now the the hardest part is uh, is making the dome a curve one, a smooth in a smooth shape. Is uh, basically adding loop cuts, uh, a bevel. Sorry, a bevel by clicking Control B. Then increasing the the cuts by the mouse wheel to make it a curve one, and then to make it uh, yeah. and uh, it's a, a simple clicks to to make the to make the dome bigger. Uh, anyway, uh, by the way, uh, Blender is not uh, a popular software in Algeria. It's a, a sad thing. Yet there are some users who made a great artworks. Uh, uh, so in this broadcast, I'll be showing you the easy way for modeling architectural elements, especially for the old ones. I hope that I'm trying me and my friend to to make to make the the blender community uh, a larger one because uh, 
the main, <coughs> the most popular software in Algeria is the 3 ds Max and uh, and Revit. And only if you know Blender and use it, they really don't know the the power the powerful tools Blender has. So basically, I'm hiding now the the modifiers to make it a, a clear for me to add, to add the to add the, the details. So now you can see me adjust the height, the the width of the of the corners. As I said, I hit the modifiers, so I focus on only on one part. So <clears throat> about modeling the window, we add a, a loop cut in the bottom in the bottom edge. Now uh, for for modeling the window, we'll made a separate object. We'll add a circle, then we scale it down to match uh, the reference image. It's like uh, a basic things about scaling down. <coughs> then we cut off a half of it and delete the vertices. Then extrude them, extrude them down. Then press F. There you go. Press F. Then, <coughs> sorry, extrude along the Y axis. Then we snap it to the wall. And we're going to. We're gonna use the build tool here, the build tool add-on. It's a great add-on, by the way, to cut off the, the wall. So we have a window. Uh, we, ap we apply the build tool modifier. And boom. Beautiful. Secondly, we're gonna we're gonna add some details to this section, like the edges, the arcs, the fine details. We hide all the mesh except the the window. Uh, for details, it's up to you how how you want how how do you want the details? You can rely on the on the reference image, or you can or you can add details the way you want. But I highly recommend to use a reference photo because. Uh, We're going to keep only the edges by deleting the face. <coughs> Extrude and scale it down to make the width of the window. Select all and extrude through the, the Y axis. To add uh, a little bit of details, we add the loop cuts and then select uh, some parts of the mesh.
<coughs> and this I select the the middle one. Oops, sorry. Something blenders doesn't do the same way we want. This is Blender. But we love Blender. You can extrude it in or out. Now we place the window in the in the hole we cut off in the past and uh, join the two meshes together and we can and you get a great result with few clicks. Now about these details, it's simple. A shift control R add loop cuts. And the match and match the, the edges along the reference image, as you can see, Blender is powerful. Uh, uh, as you know, the, the bevel modifier is uh, is an important one to add a great realism to our meshes. It's it's an advice for my friend. Now we're gonna decorate more the dome by adding the lever, the lever three of details. We add a loop cut. We add two loop cuts. Then <clears throat> we select the right one. And then the last one. Then extrude it out. Press X. Press A. And boom. If you, if sometimes you get a, a black weird shading, it's because the, the normals is flipped. You can simply go to flip, flip directions and your problem is fixed. <coughs> <laughs> and now <coughs> we got the uh, view in our mesh. And we are done, it's done. Now I'm going to show you how to make the. Uh, I'm going to use in the same method for making this uh, in basic shape. Uh, I'm going to use the same modifier. You can write modifier, then, then the simple deform modifiers. 
and make sure that make sure that array modifier is in the first order. Maybe scale it down. <coughs> and that extrude extrude along the z axis, then scale it down. We go to the front view, which is that. And we scale it out. Then we grab it to the z axis. Then it's good. Then our shape is done. Easy way. And you may you can make it thinner or thicker, depending on your depending on your on your on your model. Some like it thin and some like it thick. Always uh, don't forget to make levels to the because there's no one shot angle. Now when we are done making one object, we apply the we apply the, the modifier, then apply an array modifier through the, the X axis and make it as long as we want. If your model gets uh, if, you, if your model gets complex or you can always hide, hide your modifier to make it clear for you. We press Control G to join the meshes. Add a look at. And it's put it up. And then it touches our decoration. I highly recommend uh, to use uh, Blender is a great software, especially for modeling. You have seen that how could uh, a few easy clicks to make a great model, something you can you can't find in previous maps lately. And this is your dome. And uh, since uh, since your modifiers aren't implied yet, you can you can make it bigger or thinner. You can see by uh, by increasing the count, you get a bigger one, or by increasing the to the deform the deform angle, you can uh, vary. It. You can get a different ways of modeling. You can play around the way you want.
you can use the matcap shading to, to capture the fine details. Okay. I just wanted to, to show you the easy way how how to make how to model a dome. Yeah, it's interesting because in the chat I hear a lot of uh, people saying, "Yeah, you should have used the screw modifier," but both have their advantages and disadvantages. It, yeah, of course, you, you can you can you, uh, everybody has uh, his own way to to model this, but I found this uh, a lot easier for everyone. It's really great to see how easy you can like size up your model with uh, increasing the count. Yes, uh, and uh, and I highly recommend to use a, a reference image to make uh, to make it a lot easier. As as you can see here uh, with the the white uh, with the white house dome. So how do you go? Uh, mo how do you go uh, on texturing your model after you have modeled it? Uh, do you want me to to talk about texturing? Yeah, you don't have to show it, but just just tell tell us about it. Your your, your the rest of your pipeline. Yes, of course. Uh, texturing uh, in this uh, in this type of. Uh, is the hardest is the hardest part of my pipeline because texturing needs time and needs to be patient, as you can see. I most of the time I use the uh, smart the smart UV because. Uh, it really does the job with the, with the complex models, and I really get a great result. I most of the times use the smart UV. For, for examples, and um, we split the view, uh, and uh, I usually go for the seamless textures combined with the smart UV. Uh, I'm going to show you how to. Uh, I'm going to give you an an, uh, an examples of how of how of how I texture my models. First of all, uh, I I I take only one part, then I press U and Smart UV, and all your work is done. Uh, I know you you can get a repeat a repeating a repeating texture on my models, but uh, since since uh, it's uh, it's away from the camera, uh, it's not uh, noticeable. But uh, two important things: using a seamless texture from from polygon pro, from po, polygon.com uh, a great site for 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 seamless high <coughs> high resolution textures and using the smart uh, smart uv and you can you can get a great result
people really like your approach. Let us sh let us show quickly about your lighting. Like in the scene you're looking at, like how do you? Yes, say the. Yes, uh, it's basically uh, uh, it's lit by an HD an HD uh, HDRI combined with uh, a lot of a uh, lot of spotlights. And the strength of uh, HD uh, HDRI uh, from Polygon as usual, and as you can see, uh, I threw a bunch of uh, of spotlights uh, committed from 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 the bottom, as you can see. It, it's so simple; so it's not complex at all. It's like uh, a based image lighting with. Uh, with spotlights no. and some emissions, some em emissive lights uh, inside the inside the buildings, and that's all. And this is the final uh, final render, uh, composed and retouched by by Photoshop and some Pixar filters. And I I also model this low poly. This low poly night from uh, from the Gothic time, I think. I don't know. I'm not that guy in in history. So this is it. Okay, interesting. Uh, the the trees here are uh, are a PNG, uh, an alpha masked PNG. The trees. Uh, the scene uh, seems complex, but uh, it's really not. It's really simple scene. With uh, combined with a few modifiers, you can make something interesting to your client. Uh, well, we don't seem to have. Oh, we have. Do have questions? Oh, um, how do you apply measurement to the modeling? So how do you scale it? Uh, do you do just use your eye? or only the photos, or do you use measuring tools to make it the right size? Yes, I play, yeah, I, I play it by, by, by my naked eye. I don't usually uh, use metric on imperial units. Uh, yes, it's uh, about things, but uh, I play everything, I play everything by eye. I don't know. Uh, they always recommend to use units, but uh, I don't really use it, I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, we thank you for your stream today, uh, for uh, coming online to show us your awesome work. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, share share uh, your portfolio in the chat so people can visit it. Uh, all my works, you can all uh, find all my artworks in the in the art station website. You can see the breakdowns, the meshes, the wireframes, uh, the modelings, the animals I did. The it's yes. all. Yeah, you can you can okay. see. I have some I uh, I have some models uh, for sale on Turbo Squids and CG trays like cogs and uh, and animals in general. I have a, a pack of animals. I did. You can visit me on on Art Station and feel free to to follow me and like my my photos. <laughs>